Oh boy, uh, my guest is providing some, some great newspaper headlines. I'm just gonna show you one, this is so cute. <clears throat> you see this? The doctor is in, no, on. Chiropractor takes stage as actor, singer, musician. And I have to tell you, that's not the whole story. And in the next few minutes, we're gonna try to catch up with this beautiful woman who has turned adversity into achievement. In fact, that's a way of life for Dr. Sherry Ann Lintz from Utica, New York. How did we find you? Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I think it was through a connection. Recently, I was at the National Quartet Convention in Kentucky, and there was all kinds of ex exhibitors there. And I believe I might have met somebody there who might have put in a word here. So it's just a God intervention. Oh, I, I mean, where do we start? Um, we need to explain, first of all, that you were born mm -hmm with hearing and speech impairment. Yes. And bilateral just means both ears. Both ears. Did, did something cause that, Sherry It's Ann? considered to be nerve deafness. So when I was born, my nerves, for whatever reason, didn't develop. But we know that God had a plan. And uh, when I was real small, my mom did notice that maybe I wasn't responding like other children did, but wasn't sure. And by the time I got to school, I was five years old, a nurse did a uh, physical exam, routine physical exam, and noticed that there was definitely a problem with my hearing. Called my mom up. Uh, brought me right into the doctors, had test evaluations, and they said, yes, they thought that maybe I was a problem child, that maybe that's why I wasn't responding. Oh. But the test proved that, in fact, there was a nerve deafness, both ears, and because it didn't get picked up till I was about five, there was some speech difficulties as a result of that, because it's kind of hard to speak sounds that you've never heard. Oh, so many so. who have hearing issues have been, they fell through the cracks. Yes. Uh, misjudged, misdiagnosed or not diagnosed. Uh, but we're going to see that hasn't held you back. Oh my! Tell me now, you are you lip read? I'm I'm a very avid lip reader. I enjoy lip reading. I enjoy lip reading other people's conversations, and uh, it's my training ground, of course. But um, yeah, I, that's intuitive. That's instinctive. That's just something that you learn to do. It's a survival mechanism. Uh, of course, we know that that's uh, God in, intu intuition. Or, that he puts in it. Um, but you do hear me a little bit. I do hear. It, my hearing goes anywhere from profound uh, deafness to normal. In the lower tones, it's more normal hearing, and then it goes to profound as it moves to the higher tone. So maybe about a 50% loss, if you were to say it that way. Yeah. Now, w before we start looking at your achievements, I'd like you to touch on what you have had to overcome. Yeah. And it started right at home. It was very difficult. Um, between my two parents, there are multiple divorces, um, six to be exact, and out of that came uh, 11 brothers and sisters and five stepbrothers and sisters, and a uh, very large home, very easy to get lost in a home like that, very easy to feel unloved and unwanted in a home like that. Um, and it was uh, then to have some sort of challenge as you're going through school that's not picked up right away, it's easy to see why maybe they thought I was a problem child. It came from a difficult home. Uh, but once it was picked up and I got the two hearing aids, my grades started picking right up. Hmm. And um, my love for school started picking right up. And I just became such a strong overachiever because I was looking for that attention. Yeah, some that identity in that. Exactly that I didn't have at home, and I found great uh, solace and comfort in the accolades of man and my achievement, uh, which later became a problem for me. Uh, but that's where God stepped in. And so it was difficult, and of course children don't understand, and when they hear something different, they tend to laugh at it and make fun of it. And I definitely was made fun of, and it was very difficult, and it pushed me into more solitude, and it pushed me into greater striving and greater overachieving. For my, for my worth and my identity. Now you say that that led you initially to a bad place, but yeah. God stepped in. How did that take place? Thank God. Um, you know, what happened was I was just achieving one thing upon the other and the momentum was growing. And, and uh, at one point I had trophies in everything from fishing to bowling to uh, pageants that I had done. I had tiaras, I had sashes, I had it all. So I thought, um, and it became very difficult because you, you, it's never enough. 
and you have to get one more thing and one more thing. And I came to realize that beauty is not in how many crowns you have or, or this or how many trophies and your worth is not in that. And the way I found that out, that I had gone to chiropractic college on scholarship, they had full scholarship, I graduated a year, had a schedule fully on, on, on fire. You were a chiropractor at 24. Doctor at 24. And just full speed ahead. And until it all came crashing down, I was in a school that was huge. Uh, the acoustics in the room were very bad. I couldn't see the professor to read his lips. I was lost and I was overwhelmed. And I was so used to being a big fish in a little pond and here I was a little fish in a very big pond. And I felt lost and I had one very serious relationship at the time. And in the midst of all that calamity, I lost that relationship. This was the one time that I felt loved. And so when you lose that, you lose all the feelings of worth and all that that you had. And I started to think that maybe I'm not lovable. Maybe I am what they told me when I was growing up. And I was at an utter point of despair. And even my grades were slipping because it was just so hard in chiropractic college with the setup that I described. They weren't prepared for students with disabilities at the time. And I just said, Lord, I, there's the, it's true what they said when I was growing up. There is no reason for me to be here. Is that what they said? You know, you hear it from home. You hear it from the children. And I just said, you need to give me one good reason why I should go on. I've lost it all. My grades, the love that I thought that I had. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I said, Lord, if you can't give me one good reason, then I threatened that I would end it all. And it was literally, literally at that moment that I saw the blood-stained face of Christ. And I saw through the blood drip, you know, the crown of thorns on his head as he was on the cross. I saw the blood dripping from his face. And I heard the words, I died for you, will you live for me? I died for you, will you, you live, for, live me? for me? And I realized then that I was living for myself. And I needed my sin. No, I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't run around. But I was becoming my own God and I realized that I needed to die to myself, myself, my pride. And I realized the depth of my own sin. I didn't think I was a sinner because look what I did, look what I have. What a good person. What a good person. But yet it was all about me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I needed a savior. I needed someone to lean on, to turn to beside myself. And that was a freeing moment in my life.